BMW IBSF Skeleton and Bobsleigh World Championships continue here at Innsbruck in Austria. It's the first day of the women's skeleton competition. Can't imagine who they're here to support. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the historic Eagles track, twice an Olympic venue. We're just above the city of Innsbruck in the Austrian Tyrol. Martin Haven and alongside me, Olympic and reigning world champion, Elizabeth Yarnold. Lizzie, this Eagles track you know well. Yeah. Where are the challenges for these athletes? It's a short track. It's only 1,200 meters long, so one of the shortest tracks. The push is really important. There are technical sections, but if you get a good push start, you know, that will set you down um, for the whole run. So you want to be loaded on the sled at this point, looking into corner one. The first six corners are quite flat. So at this point, you're just thinking about keeping position, keeping your shoulders down and letting the sled um, carry all the speed that you had from the push. So this is now into corner three. There is a technical section on the exit of this corner here and you're now starting to think about the Kreisel. This is corner five, which has the luge entrance, so you need to be aware of um, how the ice is cut. Now, looking into the Kreisel, this is the longest corner, the largest corner on the whole track. Coming up out the exit of Kreisel is crucial here, because going into corner nine is a two oscillation corner, and that little blip, that can catch people out. This is the fast section of the track, just about four or five corners left, the labyrinth where athletes can get lost. Um, here, you're going about 120 kilometers an hour, so you're holding form, thinking about crossing the finish line there, and hopefully it was a fast time. Well, the times were set this year. The track record was set by Yelena Nikitina in Europa Cup races in January. The start record, the downtime record, was set last weekend by Tina Herman in the team's competition. And those already are two of the names that we've got to look at in our start list as being potential medalists and maybe somebody to take uh, the reign as world champion. Now, just to let everybody know, you haven't retired. No. <laughs> no babies yet. You're no. back in training and ready to come back and hit the ice next season, right? Yeah, I'm actually really enjoying training again, keeping very fit and busy and uh, looking forward to the season starting October. So it's not, you know, it's not that far away. And giving over my, you know, world championship trophy, I can't wait to see who it's going to be. Today is going to be a very tough competition. It's probably the most wide open field of all because we've got, you know, regular podium finishes. Janine Flock here at home. You've got to look at her maybe. Jane Channel, maybe Tina Herman, Jacqueline Lurling, they've got a figure. Laura Dees is a huge starter. I mean, Absolutely. there are a few dark horses. There are horses. so many names. Marina Gilardoni is, again, a fantastic starter. So the trick is have a good start, a strong, fast start, and try and minimize your mistakes down the track. So it is anyone's race today. The first run will be crucial. If someone gets away, are they catchable? Gosh, um, they always are. They really always are. It's 14 corners. People can make mistakes on the last corner. You cannot, you know, you've got to always think, hold your form and do your best. So the World Championship for Women's Skeleton gets underway here. 26 athletes, the first of four heats. And to break the ice for us, the USA's Anne O'Shea, winner of her first World Cup race in Lake Placid earlier this season. That was a pretty good start from Annie there. She's always been a great start athlete. She looks quite relaxed on the sled, actually. A little bit of movement from the head side to side, so that's very light steering from Annie. Yeah, it looks quite neat, actually. She's, she's an experienced athlete. She's been, this is her fourth world championship, so, you know, she knows what she's doing. She's already won a medal this year, winning gold. So she knows how to compete. That was an excellent exit from the Chrysler. And this is down into the fast section of the track, down into the labyrinth. Her form is, yeah, looks all really good. Really nice lines. And a reasonable speed, 118.7. I was hoping for something quicker. 54.25. Okay, 54.25. The track record set last weekend, 53.74. So we're a little about half a second away from that. 
which sounds like nothing, but to an athlete, that's a, it's a fairly big margin. Well, if the track record hadn't have been reset last weekend by Tina Herman, that time, Annie's time now, would have been very, you know, pretty reasonable. Yeah. The, the athletes are constantly improving themselves, they're so setting higher standards. So this is Annie's push. She's always been um, a pretty strong push athlete. It's, she's pushing actually across the sled, so the, the runner that's in the spur is far away from her, and that's quite high risk, but yeah, it looks good to me. Next up then is Canada's Jane Channel. Second year on the World Cup trail for her, but she is such an explosive starter and probably I a little pressure off for her. She's not maybe one of the hot favourites, do you think? She is for me, and I absolutely okay. love her start routine there. Mentally, she is here to fight. She is a fierce competitor. And her push start, I think we're going to see something big. 600s out of a bronze medal last year in her World Championship debut. Yeah, so fastest push so far. Anything in the 30s, if you can get down the 20s, that's ideal. But from Jane, getting the competition nerves out the way, I think that's a really nice start from her. She's, again, moving ahead really little, making slight adjustments to the steering. 900's up, still in the green. When she stays green, she's in front. If you go red, you're behind. So that's the prize all there, and the exit, again, looks really clean. Possibly the ice has is, been easy this week, but everyone's had excellent steering there. Exit 9 is, is good. 9 to 10, you come up over a little crest. There's a sled getting over there. And now she's dropped into the reds, and you can see her legs lifting, fishtailing away from the sled. She's a little bit out of control. So 54, 44, 1900s back. Team under the first of four Schneck runs, all count. So it's your total time for the four heats that will decide where you place. Annoyed with herself, I think, after those mistakes a little lower down. Yeah, the push is absolutely cru crucial for Jane. It was a really nice start. And when she jumps into the sled now, it's very efficient motion. She's keeping the body low. Hands are in position very quickly, and the head stays low. Her body's in contact with the sled. And that's the fish tailing that she really needs to avoid. She needs to keep the form down in the labyrinth. It's pretty humid the last day of training, a little crisper maybe this morning. Next up for Great Britain, Laura Dees. And another girl with an explosive start, and that's oh, such a absolutely. big part of your armoury here, right? It really is. Laura's always been an excellent pressure athlete. This is only her second World Championships, yep. um, so I know she'll be doing her absolute best each year, progressing, getting better and better every time. Won the season opener in Altenburg this year. A great start to her 2015-16 campaign. So if you watch Laura's toes, she's actually moving them side to side, dragging the toe, which is part of her steering. Um, on this track, she needs to try and keep her toes together and let the sled run as much as possible. And now this is getting into Chrysler, the most important technical section. She needs to have a clean exit here. And I bet she's going to drop a toe on the exit. She brushed the wall, so that is going to slow you down a little bit. But her head, her shoulders look down. You know, she looks comfortable in the sled. It seems strange to say that you've got to relax on the sled when you're doing 60, 70 miles an hour. And that's crucial, right? Yeah, it is. 120 kilometers an hour when four or five corners are coming you in quick succession. It's really hard to, it's really hard to steer to make any changes. 54, 46, 200 to the second behind Jane Channel of Canada. She lies in third place, 2100s behind Annie O'Shea. Yeah, that's reasonably tight, actually. I'd be pretty pleased um, with, you know, majority of athletes keeping within two, three hundredths of each, other, of each other. It makes for a good competition. The push start looks really nice. Her feet are coming down close to the sled, so all the energy is going directly forward through the sled. This is the exit of the Chrysler, and she just brushed the wall. You'll see her come out here. Her head picks up, so she's just got to try and aim for clean lines. And she's back in position, actually. She's hit the wall and back in position, so reacting well. So Laura Dees goes to get herself and her sled weighed as Tina Herman comes to the top of the track. Tina Herman, our World Cup points leader. Four wins, two silver medals out of seven races this year. 
So Team is the first athlete that we've seen that isn't so strong on the push, but she's so hard to challenge when it comes to the driving. This track might not be quite long enough for Tina to win, but you know, when you're watching her, she's very decisive. You'll see her move her head and then come back to position, drop her toe, come back to position. She knows what she's doing. Already a world champion. She was in the German team that won the team's competition last weekend. And does that have a mental effect on you? You've got a world championship medal. Does it relax you into the rest of the week? Yeah, I mean, they, as a team, they performed really well last weekend. She knows that she's got the track record. She knows she's in a really good position this season. There we go. She's already getting greens with five points to go. Top speed as well, 120.7 kilometres an hour. And her form looks exquisite down in the high speed sections of the track. And that's her training. That's being based in Koenigsee. She knows high speed. She this is, this is her well, as you say, with a short track and a slower start, it's hard to find the pace at the bottom, but she has got that ability. Just like Marion Tees used to do. <laughs> See, that was interesting. Her first question was, what was the start time? Yeah, so she knows how important it is here. Her body's still quite high. She needs to get her body low and efficient. You can see the, the sled bumble about in the... Oh, she's swinging a little bit left to right. She's coming down into cries. You can see some body movement, and the toe comes out. She's got lots to improve on, I think. It's going to be a good race. And next up might be one of her biggest challenges as well. Jacqueline Lurling, learning silver medalist behind Elizabeth Yarnold in last year's World Championships on her home track. Now, that was a great performance, but on the track she knows best. What's she going to do here? So Lilling's one of the athletes that has a slightly slower start, but again, is a fantastic driver. She's, um, she's been world junior champion twice. She's still a junior. She is. I think she's about 20 years old. Well, the other thing that's relevant this week, she won the Youth Olympic Games in women's skeleton on this track back in 2012, and Ashley Pitaway of Great Britain currently leading in Lillehammer, the current yeah, women's skeleton so competition. for Ashley. I, I <laughs> So now we're getting into Kaiser's technical section of the track. Um, in Winterberg, Jacqueline Lolling's home track, they've also got a Kaiser. So these things she's used to, she knows how to deal with. And getting into the fast section of the track is also very similar to her home track. I'm expecting to see some greens. No, we've still got two tenths. So unfortunately, there's too much of a gap for this run for Jacqueline to get into first place. 119.7, the top speed. That's a kilometre an hour behind Tina Herman. She's got a little bit more height, a bit more mass than Tina Herman as well. And that longer physique sort of works with cheating the air. I thought we might see her come back a little closer. Third place at the moment, 3,300s back. So, the start, again, like Tina Herman, just a little behind some of the faster starters. Yeah, absolutely. The, physically, it looks good. Technically, it looks good. She's just not quick enough. Here in the Kreisel, yeah, looks nice. A little movement from the legs, though. She needs to kind of keep those straight and keep the aerodynamics. We saw her with a little push cart in the car park trying to get some start practice. Didn't work. Tina Herman leads from Annie O'Shea. And this, now, big noise for the home This is the home queen. girl, yes. Yeah. I feel like um, Janine has been preparing for this all her life, all her sliding life. Beautiful new helmet livery for the World Championships. Come on, Janine. Well, what a popular winner she would be. Won a bronze medal last week in the team's competition. Does that take a bit of the pressure off her, do you think? No way. I mean, <laughs> if you've been around Innsbruck this week, actually, this past year, there have been massive posters of Janine's face. She is the home girl. She is the poster girl. And she deserves it because she's sliding really well. In training this week, she's been on fire. So you can see, if you look at her feet, they are absolutely together. Her form, her aerodynamic form is perfect. Her head's down. 
And uh, she knows what to do. She knows these tracks so well. Tiniest of leads, but you don't care if you win by a hundredth or a second, it's still just as gold. And what I love is the Austrian team are taking slightly different lines in the bottom of the track. They're actually pushing the boundaries of the steering and the cornering, trying different things. Gosh, this is a tough race. 15 hundredths behind her. Fantastic. You saw Nikki Grunberger, the coach, won a bronze medal in the World Championships here 25 years ago. I didn't know that. Yeah, it was an Austrian sweep. Christian Auer won. Andy Schmutt took Second, silver. Yeah. Mickey Grunberger took bronze. I think Mickey broke his finger that race, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's great for Janine getting into position very quickly. You can see her eyes are absolutely set ahead looking into corner one. There is no moving Janine from her, from her good position. And uh, Go on. <laughs> well, that, is that something that growing up on this track teaches you, cheating the air? Because this is about aerodynamics. It is. It's getting a good push, finding your position. And you don't really want to see the athletes doing anything at all. When they're steering, they need to be doing very minute steering. Next up is Marina Giardoni from Switzerland. Now, the start record, if it's going to be in danger, may be in danger from Marina. Five eleven is the record. Five thirty one this morning. So the reason that the push might be a bit slower this morning is you can get sticky ice. Some ice when it's very humid, it grips onto the runners in the spur. So that could be a reason why the push record hasn't been broken yet. Uh, so Marina just tapped the wall there. She's probably trying to get back online, trying to save some time. Her legs are swinging side to side, so she's not comfortable with the sled. Yes. Good lead into the Chrysler, 1600s up. Oh, working hard. She's working so hard. Her elbows are coming out, her toes are coming down. Even though she's got a lead, it's going to drop into the reds. So she's struggling to get the sled back online, which could be due to the rock not being quite right, the sled set up being a little bit off this run. 116-2 down at the bottom, losing a lot of speed below the Chrysler. Seventh place and six tenths behind. So that shows you, even with an extremely good push, a strong push, if you don't drive it right, you, you know, that's where the races can be lost. She was wrestling it out of the Chrysler, almost like a Cresta sled, really working hard. And nine to ten as well. Yeah, let's have a look at some of the replays and see what's going on. So this is coming out of the top section of the track where she taps the wall and then drops a toe. She's just trying to react as quickly as possible and not let it get away from her. And again, she's keeping her head low and shoulders down, just using the toes at the back. The problem with that, that the anchor's so far back, anything you do is going to have massive consequences. Double junior world champion break woman in bobsled. Next up is Sophia Griebel, the third of our German athletes in the field. 25-year-old from the Oberhof track. Started in Luge. Now, like Marion Tees, her favourite athlete, she doesn't have the best start, but she finds speed further down the track. Let's see what so far can produce. Fastest start so far, 5.31 from Jane Channel and Marina Gilardoni, and it's a 5.49 getaway. Yeah, slightly slower getaway again from the German athletes. But Sophia's actually been on the circuit for a few years now. It's her second world championship. She was 12th in Winterberg. So for Sophia, what she's going to be aiming for is a really strong top 10 position. You know, you've still got two years before Pyeongchang. Each year's a progression. Each year you're getting better. A really nice exit from Kreisel there. That was probably the best line that I've seen out of Kreisel. The problem is, she's steering well. She's steering hard. But that isn't always fast. Steering a lot. It's not who steers the most, is it? It's who steers the least. <laughs> who steers the least and yeah, the most accurately and lets the sled run. It's always when you're watching Martin Stuchos, it looks like he's just lying there and doing nothing. And, and that means he's doing, he's doing everything in the right places. 54-5-7, six tenths back, two hundreds in front of Marina Gilardoni of Switzerland. So Tina Herman leads for Germany, Janine Flock second for Austria, Annie O'Shea third for the USA. So she's starting with a two-handed push, trying to get as much velocity into the sled as she can from the block. Nice, big strides, actually. The, the, technically, this looks really nice. 
and so many uh, people there supporting her. It's lovely. Yeah. Then out of uh, out of corner nine, a beautiful line into ten. This is a very fast section of the track here yeah. in the labyrinth. Oh yeah, you can yeah, see her body scared. just lift away yeah. there. That's how fast she's going. Yeah. So there is so far Sophia Griebel. Next up, Latvia's Lelda Predjelena in the Europa Cup races. <laughs> took two silver medals here. And after sort of flat season last year, she seems to be really accelerating her progress. I've really enjoyed watching Lelta this year on the World Cup. It seems like a huge breakthrough year. She's got the masters of male skeleton in her team, you know, the two Dukas brothers. So the best to learn from. And, uh, and so far, she looks very comfortable on the sled. It looks fast, it looks good. Her aerodynamic form, again, like Martins and Thomas Dukos, has always been good, and that's got to pay off for her here. Yeah, absolutely. Very nice line out of corner, corner seven, the Chrysler. So where they train in Segulda, their home track, there's lots of swooping corners, so she'd be very well practised into this kind of swooshing down from this large corner. Seven hundred to the second off the lead goes into 2700, 117, seven. What about ice deterioration? How much an effect is that going to have after the first three or four? Well, now we've had about nine athletes, so you're looking at two minutes per run, 18 minutes. That is a substantial deterioration. You do have to be aware of it. But, you know, there's, there's so many different things going on in the, in the world of skeleton. It could snow, the humidity could change. Of course, the track conditions will change. Again, starting with the two hands, and then she'll bring one back to get the most efficient running position. It is such a difficult thing to do, to run bent over, what, you know. Sprinting it's... with your fingers two <laughs> inches off the ground, really. <laughs> yeah, just using a toe there, bringing her closer to the corner. And now, oh God, it's so awkward. The most with, difficult with part mat. of this track, yeah. yeah. The most dangerous part. <laughs> the most part dangerous of this part is the outrun, isn't it? <laughs> Trying to stop it. Exactly right. There's Elder Predjelena for Latvia. And our 10th of 26 starters, Elizabeth Vache, burst onto the scene last year with a silver medal in her first ever World Cup race, gold in her second. But this year, the reality strikes, and she's trying to recapture that form again. Yeah, in the team race on Sunday, um, Elizabeth was really, really fast. Very messy, but fast. Um, she's a very determined competitor. So, yeah, that, she's looking actually really good at the top of this run, um, holding her form. Her home track's Calgary, and that's actually quite a similar team because it's a pusher's track, it's very smooth, so she has the experience in the back. Now, I wonder whether, as a Bromley slider, being fast but loose actually works best, because that was always Kristen's way of sliding. Absolutely, That's yeah. kind of a, maybe how the sled still had developed. Well, she seems like she's actually got a lot of control today. She's, a, she's still in the red, so she's not quite up with Herman. Um, but yeah, that, that actually looks pretty tidy for Elizabeth. I think she'll be pleased with that. But she won a bronze medal last year in the World yes. Championship. She, the expectation to be going for top three will be there. Good speed at the bottom as well, 118.6. So she's 500s in front of, uh, 300s in front of her teammate Jane Channel, 500s in front of Laura Dees, their fifth, sixth and seventh. And she beat Jane to the bronze medal in Winterberg last year by just 600s. Here you go, here's the start again. She, her body's actually moving quite a lot side to side, so she's not as efficient in the push as some other athletes. And all the kicking up of the ice, that's how the ice is warming. It's actually being kicked up from the shoes. Quite a low line in corner 10 here. That's different to the other athletes. And she's actually sliding. Yeah. She's sliding across ways. So skidding, essentially. Not as quick. Tina Herman leads by 1,500 from the hometown Queen Janine Flock. Anna O'Shea, the USA, lying in third. It's already a tightly packed field. Women's Skeleton World Championships here in Eagles. 11th of our 26 starters, Belgian rookie Kim Marmons. Her first ever international appearance was in the world last year, just 19 years old. She was. She competed last year in the World Championships. Where? What position did she get there? Uh, I'm going to tell you in two seconds. 19. 19. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So she, in fact, she turned 19 during the World Championships last year in Winterberg. Right. And, uh, so yeah, the first few corners here for Kim actually looks very in control, considering that she's only been on the World Cup circuit for a very short amount of time. Coming into the crucial Kreisel. 
just tapping the wall there on the left, which will slow her down for the bottom section of the track. She's now thrown off a little bit, trying to get the, to get, to get the runners straight. Very high line in 10. Let's see what happens in the lap. <laughs> Looking for her, driving her around. 10th place, a 54-5. Now, this is some very close grouping down here outside the top three or four from Elizabeth Vache in fifth position down to Kim Miles, Kim Marmons in 10th. We've just got six, seven hundreds of a second. That's what you'd expect from a short track like Eagles. Um, being a pushers track, there's not going to be a lot of gap down the bottom of the track. Races are easily won or lost by a hundredth of a second. So Kim doing a bit of steering there with her toes, trying to get the sled back online. Here, it was actually looking very nice. I think she should be very pleased with the bottom section in the labyrinth. That was a really nice slide from her. She always looks like she's having the time of her life. Big, big, big smile from Kim Malmans. Next up is a returnee to a, a big part, a rookie on the World Championship this year. Kendall Wessenberg blew the opposition away in the US trials, the girl from Modesto, California. So she's only been sliding for two years. Very new to it. She watched the Olympic Games in 2014 in Sochi, thought, oh, this bobsled looks good, was interested to see that so many track and field athletes got into it, but then her brother and sister said, no, look at this skeleton thing. That's much more you, that's much more dangerous. So she watched you racing, and as a result, you're watching her racing. Yeah, and I've actually been really impressed with what she's doing so far. As a rookie, she actually looks very competent and very confident on the sled. Um, the coaches are doing a fantastic job with uh, with Kendall. The push is a little bit slow, but technically, coming around this crisis, she knows exactly where she is. A good exit there. She's got a bit of time to catch up, though, so we'll see what she does, does here in this bottom section. Again, having been sliding only two years, this is her first time on European track, so she's had six training rounds. It's not a lot to learn, even the track that's this straightforward. So six minutes practice, that's yeah. all she's had. Uh -huh. Gosh. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Well, and, that's you know, impressive. This track of all of them, easy to get down, but finding the detail to find the speed, that's, that's the experience. Every single corner you're going to have multiple steers in, especially down in the labyrinth section. It needs, you know, it needs to be absolutely right. I think she needs to just get on at the start, push as hard as she can. It all needs to come from this push start. So technically, that's where I think the benefits will come from in the future. Wow. Yep, so a little bit of leg action there. So that's kind of the scorpion leg and knocking on the side. So that will slow her down. So she's got three more runs, though. Yep. Three more runs to improve. Which will double her knowledge of the Eagles track. <laughs> she looks a little bit like Noelle Piker's face. Not at all unlike her. I wow. thought that the first time I met her. Now, here is our start record holder. Won two races on this track in January this year in the ICC, the second tier of sliding. And Elena Nikitina, such a big starter. Yeah, if anyone's going to break the track record or be near it today, it will be Elena. 518, that's huge. That is so much quicker than anyone else. The important thing now is don't make too many mistakes and carry the speed down the track. Well, we've been calling Alexander Chetikov the Russian rocket for about a decade. Fast starter, used to hit everything inside and slow himself down. Helena's development is similar, but she's now an even better driver than he was at this stage, I think. Yeah, I think that's where the improvements will come, looking at her to chat. Elena needs to work on her driving, but if you look at her pink helmet, which I love, you can see her head just tilting from side to side. She's a head and toes driver. So she has these tiny little adaptations down the track, leading with her head there. Well, fastest starter by 3,700. She had a lead, and now she comes down 5,700 behind. Oh, my word. Yes. That is very interesting. The fact that she started so quickly, and she's... You know, the gap is huge out at the bottom here. I'm not entirely sure what went wrong for her. Possibly oversteering, not letting it run enough. Well, she's not the tallest athlete. She's light as well, so she maybe has to work a little bit more. That wouldn't make much difference at all on a short track like okay. this. So this is coming out of Kreisel. 
and she doesn't tap the wall. You can see how her head, she just leaves with her head, shows the sled where to go. Going into corner eight, quite a late line there. And this is corner nine, a very nice exit. She's preparing her toe, but didn't need it. Just swinging the legs from the hips yeah. a little. So is it rock, is it runner choice? I mean, there's so many variables, aren't there? There are, there really are. Well, next so, up, Donna, Donna Crichton yeah. for Great Britain. Donna's one, one of the most experienced athletes on the circuit, but it's only her, it's her year back onto World Cup. She had a year away, and last year she was actually, she won the ICC. Yep. She's a push start athlete, so let's hope for a quick start. And she broke her toe in her right foot over the Christmas break doing split squats in the gym. So she was just pushed out of the spur there, reacting quite quickly, bringing the sled straight. Okay, so there's quite a lot of movement from the sled. It's not going exactly where she wants it to go. But she does look comfortable. Her head's down, her shoulders are down. She looks connected with the sled. And this is right into Prize's most important section. The Brits are yelling at Donna and Laura to do well. She's four tenths behind, so she's got a few points to kick it up, but she needs to not hit walls. Come on, Donna. Yeah, she knows what she's doing down in the labyrinth. She's been at this track probably every year for the past ten years, so she knows where she is. I think she'll go back with Eric, um, the GB coach, have a chat and try and work out how to make it faster, how to make it more efficient. Speed at the bottom, 116.8. We've seen 120s from the faster sliders. She comes down 14th place. Our field of 26 athletes. And her teammate, the reigning world champion, Lizzie Arnold, alongside me in the booth. So this is now coming out of corner nine. She's going to use her toes. You can just see them peeking up and down, trying to get control over the sled. She comes away and hits the wall. Yeah, athletes need to avoid brushing any wall, anything that's going to slow you down on this track. You can't give anything away. Development coach Caleb Smith, former US slider like Eric Bonotis. And here's Katie Ulander channeling some Rebecca Rabbit as she makes her comeback. Again, racing in the Intercontinental Cup. She won that title this year, the first American to do so. So Katie is the most experienced athlete on this competition. She is a fierce competitor. If she wants it, she will get it. And uh, she had a year away from skeleton. I think she had a few injury issues, but I think it's good to have a break. Good to refresh yourself, want to come back. Well, she, said, she said she came back and just felt like it was a whole new world for her. And I'm really? sure that's, that's what you feel as well. I mean, Noelle said the same when she'd been away. Yeah. So Catherine's been competing here um, for years. Her first World Championship was in 2007. So this is new to her. The competition nurse is not new to her. She knows when to switch it on. World Champion in 2012. Even though she's in the red, this is looking a pretty good performance for her. The sled's under control, her head's down, it looks good. Well, she too raced here in January, two third place finishes in the Intercontinental Cup behind Lelda Prejelena and the double race winner who was Yelena Nikitina. So 54-53 leaves her in ninth place, tied with Yelena Nikitina and 200 ahead of Sofia Griebel. And that, uh, all those tight groupings, you can move up and down so easily. I know that Katie is a perfectionist, so she will be thinking, what can I improve? How can I push faster? Her right arm that's moving is actually swinging right up to vertical, which is a very large angle. You know, it's not necessarily that efficient. So I think she's got things to improve on over the next few years before Ping Chang. Tina Herman of Germany, our race leader, first of four heats of the Women's Skeleton World Championship. Russia's Yelena Nikitin, the start record holder here, tied for ninth. Next up is her teammate Yulia Kanakina. Martin Haven and World and Olympic champion Lizzie Arnold in the booth watching the action in Eagles in Austria. Yeah, she's, a, she's a head steerer as well. You can just see her making little changes, looking to the left and to the right with her helmet. Oh, and toes as well. She reacts very quickly. 
The Russians came out this thing a couple of years ago. They used to do toe chops, just tapping the toes on the ice instead of dragging to, yes. to try and a get very, the steering effect. A very distinct toe tap and then back in position. The, the Eagles track is almost like a home track for the Russian athletes. They come here for training camps, they come here as, as much as they can. I think, did um, Helena compete in the Europa Cup a few weeks ago? Yeah, she did the, Europe, uh, the Intercontinental Cup races here. Yeah, so she's had experience competing in Eagles just a few weeks Ago. Yeah. She's been very defined with the slip steers down here in the labyrinth. Slipping away a little from the pace, comes back in 16th position, 55 16. Which is a surprise, it was a very clean rush. She cuts. knows what she's doing. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see on the, on the slow mo, see what's going on. The only former ballet dancer in ice sliding, to our knowledge. Next closest to Janine Flock, her previous sporting uh, career was as a cheerleader. So here at the start, she gets into position very quickly. She's very efficient getting into the sled, which means that all the speed and velocity is going down into the track. Nothing's getting lost. She's very slight on the sled, so aerodynamically she is an, at an advantage. And I love that. You can just see her looking from side to side. Yulia Kanakina of Russia in 16th position. Ten sleds still to come. Next up is... Canada's Lynette Prediger. She also raced here in January. Lynette returning to the World Cup later on this season. Tenth in last year's World Championships, yeah. her first ever. Yeah, Lynette didn't compete on the World Cup at all this season, though, so I'm not quite sure what happened there. Glad to see her back at the World Championships, though. She'll be thinking about bettering her tenth position from last year. She spent time at home in North America and Canada. She's a, a doctor in emergency room, so she's been working hard as well. Yeah, I can see her toes just slightly moving, preparing a steer. But sliding-wise, that looks pretty neat. She knows what she's doing, and she's in control of the sled. I'm not quite sure why it's... It's so far behind in the red. She just needs to let the sled run as much as possible. Let it pick up speed. 26 hundreds behind Tina Herman, our leader at the start. The gap is opening up a little. So that's the tricky corner nine where some athletes can get caught out. Not Lynette, she looked absolutely clean through there. And now into the labyrinth, the fast section of the track, trying to bring down the timing gap as much as possible. There's some speed at the bottom, 118.6. Comes across the line in 16th ahead of Yulia Kanakina. In the second heat, the top 20 will go in reverse order, 20 down to one, and then the remaining six athletes. So she'll have better ice to deal with than the leaders do, and so that might help to close some of these gaps up as well. Yeah, that's the great thing about skeleton is the best athletes athletes um, in the first run will go early and then that's reversed so all athletes get a chance at the best ice. Here this is at quite a long straight from 9 to 10 and she was as straight as an arrow. Nice and relaxed, a damper on the sled. You see, <laughs> when you see the athletes that. bouncing up and down that's usually a good thing. For Joska Lecant of the Netherlands, the first of two Dutch sliders now. First start in this year's World Championships. Joska in 15th last year. The 600s off the start of our race lead with Tina Herman. And Herman shows that you don't have to have the fastest start. It certainly doesn't hurt. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Joska's had a few coaches over the years being part of the small nation, so I'm not sure who's coaching her this week. This past year, though, she has had some really good results. I think in the European Championships, it was one of her best results, so she is absolutely on form. Yeah, Martin Rettel has been helping out with the coaching this year. He seems to be coaching about a third of the athletes on tour, as well as his official day job. Yeah, so a little brush on the wall there between 9 and 10, so that could potentially slow her down now into the fast section of the track. 15th at the start, she's picked herself up to 14th place ahead of Kendall Westenberg on the splits and at the line. There she is in 14th spot. Yeah, I think that was a really tidy slide to the No major mistakes at all, just that one brush between 9 and 10 to improve on. And always the push, always get yourself ready for a big push in Eagles because that is crucial. Spent a lot of her winter zooming backwards and forwards from the Netherlands to go back to work for a day or two between races. 
So when Joska sprints, she actually looks quite far ahead of the sled. Most athletes tilt their head down to the sled, whereas Joska looks far in front. Her body is twisting a little bit side to side, so um, practice always makes perfect. Here, a little brush on the wall. That was her, Joska's only major mistake on the run. So there she is. You saw her coach Martin Rettel, bobsled driver for the Netherlands. Evo de Bruyne was up there shouting her on as well. She's not the only Dutch athlete in the field. Next up is Takako Oguchi from Japan, lies 24th in our World Cup rankings. So Takako took part in three races um, on the World Cup this year. A few weeks ago, she was actually in hospital. So being here is a huge achievement. I hope she's enjoying it and going to do her best. Got married over the summer. A very efficient start. You can see her head is that bit lower than anyone else. She's very slight on the sled, so aerodynamically in a very good position. Just a little tap on the wall, two to three there. That can catch you out. Hopefully here she doesn't tap the wall. Oh, almost a slight brush, but she saved it. Takako also leads with her head, so you can actually watch, watch the crash helmet just leaning from side to side. She had quite a late entry into the Chrysler, which may affect her exit here. Not too bad into corner eight. There's lots of slight changes that Takako needs to make for the second run. Lots of long skips as well. She doesn't yeah. quite have control. No, she doesn't. Or she may have too much control and the sled's reacting too quickly. That looks really nice down the bottom section of the track. So she's reacting better at high speed. But it's one of those tracks again. Do as little as you can. Oh, I don't like it when people <laughs> stop their with their hands, hands no, out. No, no, no. <laughs> That's the hardest thing, is stopping the sled at the bottom. That's Hirokoshi, the coach, with his sled down at the bottom. It's so important to have people yelling at you and supporting you. The push is crucial. And when Takako comes down into the sled, she's very efficient, flicking up that that ice, she's pushing that hard. Her head is down in position. She knows where she's going. So corner eight here, very late into the corner and immediately shot up into the air. The consequence of corner nine. And you can see the runners just gripping and moving side to side. Nice gum shield, I like that. Very good. Next up with the green and gold of Australia, Jacqueline Narakup from Brisbane in Queensland. She had a bit of a torrid time in training. Let's see if she can Turn that form around. Really nice push technique, getting the knees through in line. And you see her, her right shoulder just picked up a little bit there as she came out the spur. That's another way to steer the sled, is use your shoulders. But on a track like this, you've got to keep the aerodynamic position, toes together and shoulders down. Started as a bobsleigh break woman behind Astrid Lock Wilkinson. So the problem here is because Jacqueline has hit one wall, it's like, you know, one thing affects another. It's like a really long game of snooker, almost. Quite a high-lining Kreisel here. And unfortunately, she just bashed the wall there on the left-hand side. But she's back on line. Yep, that looks really nice. A little skid going into corner 10. And she's back online for the labyrinth section for 120 kilometers an hour down here. 115.5 at the bottom, 55.11. So the speeds. Where are your speeds? Where are you seeing? Oh, there we go. Yeah. So the, the speeds are dropping. We haven't. The last fast one we had was Lynette Prediger got 118 four or five sleds ago, but the, the speed is gradually dropping. Of course, the athletes here now aren't necessarily always the fastest sliders either. Yeah, it's interesting how the corners actually change and Jacqueline actually bashes the wall there on the left-hand side. The speed can change how the oscillations and the heights work around the corners. Coming out of corner nine here, you'll see Jacqueline control the um, pressure really well. Her runners move to the side. She's skidding a bit into corner 10. Lots of support for Janine Flock of Austria, who currently lies second. We've had our first 20 athletes down heat one of the Women's Skeleton World Championships. And next up, a first time start for Kimberly Boss in the World Championships, the second of our Dutch sliders. 
Well, Kimberly started in bobsled, silver in the Junior World Championships this year after taking bronze on this track in the Olympic Winter Games as a bobsled driver. Wow. She only started in skeleton last year, entered the Junior Worlds for the sake of it and ended up with a medal from that as well. So you can see how Kimberly is coming out of the corners a little bit earlier than most skeleton athletes. That's actually a bobsled technique, is you'll want to drive the sled out of the corner, the bobsled out of the corner. So protect, she knows where she is, she knows how to drive it. Her body is moving about on the sled a little bit. Her legs swing to the left, to the right, and her toes move around. Stunning so run so far. Oh, oh yeah, losing a bit of pace down the labyrinth here. She had a, a not a great line out of exit 10. But so she is seventh at the wow, line. So that there is, is speed phenomenal. in the track, my goodness. That's experience, I think, and practice through bobsleigh driving. She's driving very well. And uh, one just major thing, exit of 10 into 11. Don't skid. <laughs> yeah. Friends and sponsors' names on the helmet. She's in a borrowed race suit. So here's the push. Her feet are quite flat, so that may come from the bobsleigh training. She needs to get up on her toes and don't let her heels touch the floor. Sleds are so, so different, so low compared to the bobsleigh. She's 20 years old, graduated from university on the 1st of February and is in the World Championships here on the, where are we now, 19th. Austria's Karina Meyer, the second of the Austrian sliders. Coach Mickey Grunberger holding her sled. And lots and lots of kids here. Met the Austrian team in a special assembly at one of the uh, schools this year, uh, this week. On Monday, they all went down there. So Karina really reminds me of Shelley Rudman. Yes. Not only the way that she pushes, her form on the sled is just like Shelley. So she's made a few mistakes here before she even gets into corner two, which will slow her down further down the track. But she's been sliding here since like 2008. She knows the track well, and she knows how to get back online quickly. Yes, one of the forerunners here in the skeleton races. She's now 10, but uh, she's been sliding on the track from the top since she was eight. Oh, so yeah. that's how since early they start. Yeah. Yeah. So this is Exit Chrysler, which, yeah, pretty perfect. Karina just dropped her toe to help the steering. Corner nine, the Austrians have. <laughs> it's like magical how they slide those technical corners. And she's keeping her, her head down, leading with her head. So her head sort of drops out of the corner, shows the body where to go. Dives out of 14 across the line, 21st place, 55, 2, 7 slide. I think part of that is going to come from those few mistakes that she made at the top of the track. You know, you need to make sure that you're running fast onto the sled and then you relax and allow the sled to carry that pace down to the Chrysler. If you lose speed at the start, that deficit follows you all the way, doesn't yeah, it? it does. So Karina's hips are swinging a little bit from side to side, and that just comes through more experience, more technical awareness. Here, she just bumps, that's corner one. She actually gets hit away from the entrance of corner one and isn't able to get onto corner one. So very slight things. She looks, happy, she looks like she's enjoying it, and that's the yeah. most important thing. For Russia is Anastasia Schlapak next up. Another of their young athletes made her World Cup debut this season, just 20 years old. Fourth in the Youth Olympics, which we bang on about, but it was held here in Eagles in 2012. Favorite athlete is German bobsledder Nico Walter. I wonder if he knows. He might be now. <laughs> I'd have to let him know that. Is it right that uh, Anastasia is a gymnast? Or I think she was is, that, yeah. yeah, as yeah. well, yeah. So she's going to have that awareness to react very quickly. Moving, she's moving her legs from side to side. You can see them almost sweeping at the back, leading with her head as well. Now, that's the thing that all the Russian girls have. Is that they, something that... Well, the, Chechikov has that technique. Yeah. He almost bends like a banana with his head and his legs, using the body weight uh, to help steer the sled. So uh, Anastasia's lack of experience may hinder her a little bit here in Eagles, so she just brushed that wall there. It's lack of not knowing exactly where you are in these huge corners. You're getting pushed onto the corners with like three or four G-forces. It's a really hard thing to do, what we're watching these girls do. But her 
form on the sled and aerodynamic form looks really nice down the bottom section of the track. And the start is good as well. 5.48 was only a hundredth off our leader. But she comes across the line. 20 second spot ahead of Takako Oguchi. And another athlete with uh, a great helmet livery. I asked her, what is it exactly that we're seeing on there? She said it's the Cheshire Cat from Alice in Wonderland. Oh, wow. I know. I love that. <laughs> I don't know who designs these, but they're fantastic. So here, she's going to hit the wall on the left-hand side. And the body, you can see the body lift away from the sled. And going into corner eight hit very late. The sled shoots up in the air. Exit of corner nine. She saves it, but still, lots of toe action, lots of things going on, and you should be letting it run. Lots of head, shoulders, knees and toes from Anastasia Schlapak, uh, Russian rookie. 24th of starters is from the warmest native land, the Virgin Islands, Katie Tannenbaum. Spends most of her time sliding in North America for obvious geographical reasons. right in position you can see her eyes desperately focusing on corner one coming into corner two she got onto corner two quite early so we'll see how the exit is then affected just losing her toe dragging her toe along to keep in the right line spent christmas on the beach in 30 plus degree temperatures came straight to lake placid where it was minus 27 <laughs> just a little yeah so now going into price with quite a late line slightly higher line going through the Chrysal um, and then late into eight. So with these sliders, one thing can then lead to something else. You know, you need to get back online as quickly as possible. That looks like a really nice line in corner 10. Keeping her elbows in. Two flakes of snow starting to fall. Won't affect the track yet, but it might change things for the second heat. And across the line she comes, 24th position. So that means the athletes who are between 21st and, 15, and the end 20. of competition, they'll go after the best athletes. So the, these guys will be just after Tina Herman, which will be pretty awesome looking at Tina Herman going just before <laughs> you. Quite scary. So this is the exit of Kreisel here. Pretty nice line, lifting her head on the exit, but a very late line again into eight. And she controlled that really well. She kept the sled down and going round the corner. And the skid here, you can see a lot of the runners. Ideally, you just want to see the front pit of the runner and you know the sled's going straight. And the runners sideways always slow you down. Same as when you get skis or ice skates sideways. Two sliders left to go from Barcelona in Spain. Maria Montejano, that's her brother Ramon holding the sled. And her dad is here as well, watching his first ever ice sliding live. So that push performance for Maria looks really tidy. I know she's suffered from, from some injuries this season and still is a bit sore from some leg injuries. But yeah, not a bad push in form very quickly. So brushing that wall two to three, a few of the athletes have been caught out there. You've got to be decisive when those steers need to be. You've got to show the sled where to go. I love the red crash helmet as well. It's pretty cool. Now into corner seven. She had a nice early line into corner seven, so a bit different to some of the other athletes. Not a bad line out of Chrysler, but she's using her toes. She feels as though she's not quite comfortable with what's going on. Yep, back on line for corner 10. 21st place, she wants to get into the top 20 if she can. Slips a little down at the bottom, she's late in the labyrinth. Yeah, things start to slip a little bit out of control there, but a few things to work on for the next three runs, next two, three runs, and that's all you can do, get better every run. Yep. Ooh, cannons into the wall off the crash mats. There's her partner in crime, Sarah Lavrencic, who's not sliding this year. I think it's great that there is the community, especially for the smaller nations. Everyone is supporting each other. So the push start for Maria, her legs are coming down close to the sled, so all the efficiency, that, that left leg did swing out a little bit, but all the energy you want going through the sled, down the push, and here, this is the labyrinth, she's a little bit out of control, a little bit high in corner 12, and a skid there into corner 13, so that will slow you down the bottom section of the track. And if you get late out of 10, there's no time to catch up, really, is there? It's so fast. All you can do is be brutal with the sled. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, hang on, yeah. 
final of our sliders in the first heat of the women's skeleton competition is Marta Olovska. Last year, she made her Major League debut in the World Championships. She has yet to start a World Cup race in her career. And she's only raced on this track once in her life as well, so her knowledge bank is near empty. Yeah, pretty much. About 12 minutes practice, and that's it. But... Um, Marta looks like she's reacting really well. She knows what the sled is trying to do, and she's not overreacting. She's not panicking. She's lightly just using her toes. So she's quite a, quite a natural slider. And now into the Chrysler, into the big corner. And at this stage of your career, it's about trying to build the knowledge, isn't it? Yeah, build it the is. Experience. Every track is so different. So all you can do is improve your feeling on the sled. She'll have to note down their corner nine. She made a massive error on the second oscillation. So every run, we're just trying to improve it a little bit. Well, both the Polish athletes have been struggling in the eight and nine crossover. Across the line, 56.89 to complete our first heat. And the deal is, there are four runs in the World Championships. In the final run, we just have the top 20 in the field, so they go 20 down to one. So the battle for those outside the top 20, first and foremost, is to get into that cut and make the final heat. So this is corner eight. She's skidding all the way into corner eight. So that's going to make the next transition really difficult and coming out of nine. But she's not panicking. Yes, she's reacting, using her toes, but she's not. Her head isn't up, her shoulders aren't up. So... <laughs> it's that exit of Kreisel, corner seven, which sets you up for, for yeah. eight, and, and they are still struggling. Both, both of the Polish uh, athletes are struggling with that. At the top of the field, after the first of our four heats, is Germany's Tina Herman. A third of a second covers the top four athletes, though. We have Germany, Austria, and the USA in medal positions after the first of four runs. In the second heat, they'll go 20 to 1 and then 21 to 26. Let's see how that will shuffle our pack. The girls will be back on track at 11.15, 10.15 Greenwich Mean Time for the second heat of the day. And then they will race again tomorrow. Here's how they stand. Tina Herman with the first heat lead but it is still wide open. Look behind Jacqueline Lurling. This with Fachi, Jane Channel, Kimberly Boss with a great run. A tie for 10th position. Elena Nikitina, Katie Ulender. Couple of hundreds covering the next three sleds. And then the tight battles to stay in the top 20 with Yulia Kanakina in the drop zone at the moment. So that's it from the first of our heats as a light dusting of snow starts to fall. Join Olympic and world champion Elizabeth uh, <laughs> Arnold and me for the second of our heats. Nearly called you Fachi then. We will not do that a second time. Elizabeth Fachi will be on track with the other girls trying to go for the lead overnight. Let's see what the weather brings us. Join us at 11.15 for our second heat here live from Eagles in Austria. <laughs>